Hey developers, today we're going to look at Vuex, the Vue.js state management system. We're going to look at some more intermediate topics on this so you can understand a little bit better. We're going to look at modules, how you can import those modules, how you can namespace those modules, and also how you can automatically import them, especially if you're working on a larger Vue app. So let's begin. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of the Vue.js in action book. I put a link in the description below. So make sure you stay all the way to the end and you'll learn all about this. And I also have all this code you can find in the description below so you can follow along. I would really encourage that. Download the code, do an NPM install on it so you can kind of understand how this all works. So this is a really simple app I created to illustrate the point and it has a bunch of Vuex hooks in it. So this is called the jokes app and these are jokes. And then I just have some silly up or down votes on it. Did you hear about the restaurant on the moon? Great food, no atmosphere. So just really silly. I'm using Vuetify, which is the material design framework, which makes it look really nice. It was really easy and simple to set up. And then I have a, an add jokes button where you can add your own joke, test joke, and then you can add an answer here. And then it just adds it to the list of jokes. And then I also have a login button, which doesn't really log you anything in, but it just kind of pretends like you do. So if I can put my name Eric here and he adds it and it says, welcome Eric at the top there. So it's just really simple. If I refresh this, it all goes away. And the way I'm doing this, I have Visual Studio Code open right here. I, you can see here, I have the home component inside the home component. I, I have this dispatching of the init store. So every time the app loads, it hits my store, which I'll show you guys in a second. You can see here I have my mutations, actions, and state. So the init store is this action right here. And what this does is if it hasn't been loaded before, I do a quick check here, then I do a fetch to the jokes.json file and just if you know Vue.js, if you want to load something from the local folders, you just put it in the public. So my jokes.json file is here. It loads it asynchronously, and then it commits it to set jokes. So by the way, if this is really sounding confusing already, I have a learn Vuex in 10 minutes, which is a real beginner's version of Vuex. I would recommend, I'll put it right here. You can click on it in the top right-hand corner. So go ahead and watch that video first. Um, I'll, I'm going to go through some more intermediate steps of UX so you guys can understand um, so we don't have to worry about learning about the basic stuff right now. So make sure you watch that video first. What, what I'm doing here is I have this asynchronous call and then once I re get back what I need, I get the JSON and then I set to the set jokes, which is a mutation, which then just sets it to the state. Now I know I've and when I've talked to people and I've seen in the forums, people are sometimes confused because there's, you can dispatch actions, but you can also just commit mutations. So some people are thinking, well, why don't we just always commit a mutation and not use actions? Actions are great for asynchronous calls. So if you're doing something like I'm doing here with an async call and a fetch, you have to wrap that around an action. It won't work inside a mutation. So that's what it's great for. Also actions are great for, you can do multiple mutations. So if your action is, is not asynchronous, but you want to do one, two, three different mutations at the same time, then I would create an action for it. If that's not your case, you can actually just commit a mutation directly by just committing to a set jokes. And when I say commit, that's how you do it through the store. So you can commit directly into the mutation. So, you know, I have the set jokes, add jokes, and then here's getters here. And one nice thing, thing about a getter, is that you can do things like this. Like I want the latest ID out of my JSON. So I'm actually doing a, a loop here for each, finding which the latest, the last, the latest ID from the loop and then returning it. So you can do a lot of logic inside your getter. So you don't have to just return back the states.jokes or just return the state directly. And then I have my add form here. This is where I do my dispatch of the add joke where I kind of put together the whole object before I send it. I have this login, which I showed you before, which I'm just committing the username. By this is a point, by the way, I'm just doing the commit. I'm not actually doing an action. I'm just doing a mutation right here. And then list jokes where I 
am just listing, this is actually a component that I'm pushing stuff into. You see it has a couple of props, question, answers, and votes. And that is being pulled from home right here. See list jokes right here at the top. I have, I'm sending in the jokes question, the answers, and the jokes votes over. With all that said, this can become a little unruly. It's already, you know, it's only 50 lines, 52 lines, but just imagine if you had anything more complicated than this, and now you have like 100 lines, 200 lines. A great way thing you can do is to move it into module. So uh, what we can do is I'm gonna create two modules. So I created this modules folder beforehand, and then I have this auth.js file and this jokes.js, and I'll get to this index in a second. So in the auth.js file, uh, I'm basically gonna move over everything that's auth related for my store.js into the auth.js file. So uh, I'll go ahead and just do that real quickly. I have the state, I want my username. I got my getters. I want the, obviously the username getter. Actions, I want my add username, which is gonna commit this add username. And this mutation, which is just going to do the state.username name. And I'm gonna save that and I'm gonna do the same thing for jokes. So uh, I got my state here, I have my jokes object, and my getters. I wanna obviously have a getter to get the jokes and the latest ID. And I'm just going to do the for each to grab it. And then finally I have my actions, well, I have mutations too after this. And that's the init store that I showed you guys earlier. Basically I'm just copy and pasting this in here and it's base, it's it's grab this is the init store function and then i have my mutations which then has my add joke so now i have my auth.js file and my jokes file now are populated so i can use modules so instead of having this state here i'm going to just delete all this so i'm just going to delete all this cuz i don't need it any longer and now i'm going to add in my modules modules will list our modules so we'll have auth and I'll have my jokes, and then I'll import those two in. So I'll import auth and jokes. All right, great, so I have my new modules here. I imported an auth and jokes, and if I refresh it, looks like it's working still. I'll just make sure, I'll add in some information. Cool, added my new joke at the bottom, and if I change my login, you see my new login name shuts up. So everything is working great. So now I have this new auth, or module, this new jokes module, and I have a store. Okay, so let's take a look at adding these modules to be automatically imported in. So you can imagine what happens if you have maybe dozens of modules in here and you need to auto import them or you have to add list them all in here. It could become very tedious and you can also do some fun things once you have these modules auto importing in as well. So actually I got this from Chris Fritz. It was from last year's ViewConf. Uh, what you need to do is in the modules folder, you'll add this index.js file. And you can see here it's blank, but I'll go ahead and show you what to look, what to add in here. So first I have Lodash installed on this, this view CLI, went ahead and added it. And then I'm doing this require module that does this require context. So it basically extracts the JS files inside the module folder. So this is uh, just a little bit of, of reg regex here. And then we're gonna actually export the default modules when we get it in here. And we're gonna use this require modules keys. So it's gonna go through each, basically each one of these files. And then it's gonna first make sure if it's the index file that we just skip it. Uh, otherwise, we're going to set this modules object and we're going to get the file name out of it. The we're using this required module, which is this, this thing right here, which extracts the, the context out of it, it, extracts the files out of it. And then we're gonna use our lodash with our camel case to make sure we um, have the right case here. So if I save that now in the store file, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and comment this out. Great, so now instead of setting this array here, this object of modules, I just put in modules here and I can refresh it here and everything is working great. So now I have these modules that are being automatically imported in from our 
uh, from our modules folder. So the next the next thing we want to do is to use namespace module. The thing with these modules is that we have these getters and these actions, but let's say you have username in the auth module, auth module, but you still have, but you also have username inside the jokes module, then there would be a conflict. And you can see once you get many dozens of modules, you, you definitely need to start namespacing them so they don't conflict. As of view 2.1, they have this way of doing automatic namespacing of modules. And to do that, you just have to add in, I'll show you here in states, this namespaced equals true. So I'm gonna put this namespace equals true above both of these. And now you'll see that uh, nothing's loading. So if I look inside the console, I'm getting this error that it can't find this unknown getter jokes. So now we have to go back through the app and basically fix it. Every time we reference the store to do a dispatch or get, now we have to get the correct namespace out of it. So if we look at this map getters here for Vuex, this is where it's getting our first error. So it can't find jokes. So there actually is a handy dandy way of doing this. So instead of using this import map getters like this, uh, you can use this thing called create namespace helpers from Vuex. And then from there, you can get map getters, but you can do it this way. So what this says is we're gonna use this create namespace helpers, we're gonna grab it from jokes, and now we don't have to change this map getters here, everything should work. So this is a special Vuex function that helps it when using namespaces. So anytime you use these, these uh, map getters, map computer property, things like that, use this created namespace helper because it helps. So if I save it and I reload it, um, I get an unknown action type in its store. So that would be the next thing right here. So it says I'm dispatching init store, but it's no longer init store because I'm namespacing it. So the way the namespacing works, it's basically the name of, of the module that we created. So in this case, we know init store is in, let's see here, inside jokes, init store. So if we go back to our home component, we just need to type in jokes slash init store, save it, and we refresh it. Cool, so now we can see it's working. It's listing all our getter is working. However, our add jokes is broken. We do that, we get an error that we don't have an add, add jokes type. So to fix that, we can go back to our home or we can go back to our components where we're doing our add form. And we can see here we're doing this dispatch joke, but once again, it's not in joke. It's, it's not add joke, it's joke slash add joke. And we can see list jokes, we're gonna have the same or excuse me, login, we're gonna have the same issue. We have this add username, but really it's auth slash add username. So let's see if that's all of them. So if we refresh it here, if I click add joke and I put it in, okay, cool. It, it actually gave me an error because it's not joke, it's jokes with an S at the end. So let's try it again. So if I add joke and I hit add, cool, it added at the bottom. If we go to login and I, let's see, Eric is my name. You could see it did not show it up here. So I think it added to the store. So there, we're missing one other place. If we go to the app view, we have this computed property down here. It's just getting the username. So this is actually going to be like this. So it would be auth slash user name. Let's see if that works. So there it says, welcome Eric, which is good. So if I refresh it, login, cool. Now it's, now it's showing up correctly. So anytime we have, we're trying to access it directly through a getter, we'll have to make sure you put the slash. So the module name slash, whatever the, whatever we're trying to grab the getter. So I think that's it. Uh, since we, I think that's it for fixing the namespacing. So the last thing I wanna show you guys is how we can automatically 
inside our store here uh, automatically have it do something for us. So uh, a good pattern for that, and I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste this because this video is getting a little long, is we could do something like this. So what this does is it says, we're gonna look through our module names of modules that we have here. And we're going to take a look at the actions. If it has actions and it has a knit store, then go ahead and dispatch it. So the cool thing about this is that we can have during the loading up of the app, instead of, see here in my app, let's see here in the home view, I'm doing this init store. So as soon as the app loads, I'm in sending this init store. I actually don't need to have this any longer because inside my view, inside the store itself, I'll go ahead and just, this will be automatically ran. Uh, what we need to do is we can do this a little bit differently. So instead of exporting the default new, view store, we're going to create const store and that's going to equal new view x store and then we're going to export default store here that way we can use this store with this dispatch right here. And if we do that, cool, you can see it loaded everything as it was supposed to because it's no longer loading it from here it's loading it inside the store module as soon as it loads. So this is just an, another really cool little trick. Uh, once again, I took this from Chris Fritz. <laughs> uh, he actually even has some more tricks, but I, I think uh, this is enough for this video. So you can see here now, I'm, I have all my Vuex in modules. I'm loading it automatically using the index file. I'm using this init store. And what this, by the, by the way, what this does is any module name that has init store, it'll get, <coughs> it'll get triggered. So you can have init store in auth and init store in jokes, init store everywhere else, and all of them will be dispatched as soon as the app loads, which is really cool. And everything's namespaced. All right, guys, so I hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. I, I love to hear your comments. And like I said, if you got a little confused in this, make sure you download the app and take a look for yourself. There's a lot of neat things in here that you can do just to be a little bit a little bit better at Vuex. Oh yeah, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And leave a comment below of what you think about this. And I will be uh, looking at them and answering them. Thanks.